How long should it take for you to write the first draft of a screenplay? Like, What's your typical turnaround time for the first draft? Oh, it's interesting because usually the way I write a script is I'm usually working on another finishing the previous movie. So what I tend to do is I tend to use a certain amount of my free time on developing the story and jotting down ideas. And I can spend a long time jotting down ideas while I'm working on something else. And then once it reaches critical mass and there's enough ideas jotted down, then it's just a matter of me going, yes, I'm gonna write that into a script and finding the time to do it. And I can usually buckle down at that point after having spent all that time with the ideas and developing the characters are there and I know the basic plot, I know the basic set pieces, all that's been you know slowly accumulated over months and months while doing something else. The first draft can happen really fast. First draft can be done in, in, in a couple of weeks, if that's all I'm doing. If I'm able to have a couple of weeks straight, well, that's all I can do is to sit down and write you know, 10 or 12 hours a day, boom, you can do the first draft. But the first draft is that's just the start of the process. The first draft is kind of like just you taking all those notes and putting it into a form where you go, ah, it's a script. And then at that point, then you can really start, I, I show it to low. Laurence and, and, and she looks at it and we can start the process of like figuring out what, what seems to be working, what, what scenes are great, well, there should be more scenes like that. This this scene, it's like, obviously she won't be mad if I say it, but sometimes she'll, so like early on I would write a script and she would like, I, I love the first, the first initial notes on the first draft are fantastic. And sometimes there'll be like giant X's on a page, like boring, you know, but it's great because it basically, you're getting those outside eyes to know like what's engaging, what's capturing you. And then the other part of it is of course on the drafts is like shrinking everything down, everything to its core essence. Uh, so you don't have any repetition in terms of scenes, repetition in terms of locations or, or characters doing the same thing. It kind of like for me, what I've learned over the years is you basically like what's the latest you can get into a scene and the earliest you can get out. You know, it's like how and how can you make that work and flow? Uh, and from an editing standpoint, and also Lo as a, as a shooter and cinematographer, like we spent a lot of time, um, a lot of time with Echoes of Fear. Our last one, when we were doing the different scripts, was figuring out like, um, you know, how we can make that flow really nicely. Whereas the beginning of the movie, we pass through about two and a half weeks of time. In the first twenty minutes of the movie, we go through about two and a half weeks, and we have a lot of like short scenes. Like actually, if you clock them, there are like scenes that are twenty five seconds. So a lot of it was like dovetail, figuring out in the script stage, like how to dovetail the audio, hit the scene, and have everything still flow. So even though you have all these like really, really short scenes and you're passing time and you're going, you know, in as late as you can and out as early as you can, but you, you can't be like disjointed. Everything has to flow in terms of the visual and the edit. And that, has, that first starts with working that out in the script. And then of course, when you get into the post, you, some, you know, you push that even further, but it has to start in the script stage. You know, it has to be thought out that way in the beginning. So, you know, like these are the moments in the scene, which will bridge us and in visually into the next scene and stuff. So it, it's exciting to me. It's like, that's, I, I mean, I love the process of doing the multiple drafts on, on a script and, and honing it. it to me, like honing the story is, is the most fun. The most daunting is probably like getting all those initial ideas together and getting through that first draft. Because once you have that, then you, you can just play on, on all the different versions and just keep making it better. The same way like when you finish the movie, you keep editing it to make it better. You keep, you know, you finish your first version, which is your script, and then like forget the script, now we got this. And then you start letting the movie tell you what it wants to be and start playing and edit to like figure out how to even make it tighter and better and take it to the next step in the editing room. So, and then of course, music and sound design, that's really the icing on the cake when you get to, get to that level. You think your experience as an editor has really helped with the storytelling? I think so, because even when I started, um, like by the time I was doing my second or third short, so I guess by the time I was like 12 years old, I was editing at that point, I was shooting Super 8. Uh, and believe me, when you shoot, uh, and edit Super 8 and you are physically cutting the film and then having to tape it back together, you think about what you're editing because, because it's like that is a process. So you really are editing in your head because it was difficult. You edit in your head. So 
uh, as a kid, I was like, you already start editing in your head because of the difficulty of splicing that Super 8 film and putting it together. So I kind of like learned that and internalized that. And then what you learn is what you start doing is you start editing in your head before you even shoot. So before you even shoot anything, you're storyboarding. And you're storyboarding it out from the edit in your head. And in that, in that, so it's like you're editing even from the very beginning. Of course, that changes because things on the set and it's very organic and things may change from your storyboards and they may change from the edit in your head when you actually get into physically, truly editing what you shot. But I think you're just always editing. I think, and the same with writing. And the same way when you're writing, you're editing. You're editing the scene to figure out how to make it shorter or tighter and the words and do, do they need to say all those words? Do they need to say any words? You know, is, is it, can this just be expressed by an expression? So it may start out in your first draft, it's a paragraph speech from someone which turns into maybe three words. So in a way it's like, I think editing is the essence of telling a story is, is, is editing, whether it be like editing in your writing or editing in your head when you're storyboarding before you shoot or truly the editing, what's called editing when you're editing your, your finished product, so. Even if I reached a point where I would be using another editor, which I would not be against at all in terms of the physical editing, I still think the process would be a lot of editing would be going on in my head, uh, you know. So yeah, I think it's just like a key element for me. Is seeing, I see it visually. And that's how I got into making uh, movies to begin with, as opposed to like doing short story writing or writing novels as much is that I, 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 I see it in my head. This is how the story comes to me. So in a way, even when I'm writing the script, I'm watching it in my head. Sometimes I wish you could just jack a little cable into your brain, <laughs> you know, it'd be, it'd be pretty awesome. Maybe one day that's gonna happen. Everyone's gonna be able to do their own movies because they're gonna be able to do it. But then you have to really think about it, I guess, or your, your, your movie would be pretty jumbled, but. Uh, like charging an electric car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then sometimes that's the challenge is you see it in your head and, in, and on an independent level when you're fighting with your budget, it can be very challenging and frustrating because you have this movie in your head and you're trying to get to that. It wasn't until we did Echoes of Fear, for the first time, I felt like I got something better than what was in my head. And to me, I definitely think it's the best film we've done, Lo and I have done together. And, uh, and it was such an amazing feeling to watch the finished movie and go, that's better than what I edited in my head oh, before great. I did it. And it made me so happy. Because usually the other movies I would watch, and I was like happy with Dark Remains, our third movie, because I felt like I got 80% of what was in my head. And I was like, oh wow, this is an amazing accomplishment. I got 80% what I saw in my head. So to actually get something better than I saw in my head really made me feel like, okay, we finally, we finally got it. <laughs> We probably figured it out. So it's pretty nice. Well, plus you hear so many filmmakers say, it wasn't the movie I thought I was gonna make. Like it, it, it got away from me once we got right. in the edit room. It wasn't, it was still, I'm still happy with it or whatever, but it wasn't the movie I want. You know, cause, cause I, yeah. we have this fantasy of how we want yeah. something to turn out. Right. And then you're dealing with so many elements on right. set. Right. And things just get away. Right. And so that's- Well, the real magic is when you can, like what happened with us with Echoes of Fear, the real magic is when the movie takes on a life of its own and becomes something better than what was in your head. And that I feel like is when you finally break through the wall is when that happens. And I think the really great movies, that's when the magic happens is when it actually becomes something beyond. It's like you, you just reach a point where all the elements come together and it goes a step beyond what you even had imagined. And then I, I feel like then, to me that's like, to me it's like the really rewarding experience. Because otherwise you're just chasing what's in your head and it can become very frustrating. I mean, I guess unless you're <laughs> David Lynch and have a hundred million dollars and, and by golly, you'll get what's in your head, you know? <laughs> because you've got the resources and money to do it. But, you know, there's probably 10 directors in the world who can actually, you know, have the resources to be able to truly do no matter what to accomplish their vision. It's very difficult. I'm sure even if you ask some of those, those directors, they would probably, maybe, who knows, say, well, it sort of is, but you know how, how everyone's critical of their own work. Right, right, yeah. You know, they no, notice right. something right. that you're we right. would never even notice. You're right, you're right. 
uh, you know, sound of a footstep that they thought wasn't, you know. But there are a lot of people like, I, I bet you like Martin Scorsese doesn't stop editing a movie until Martin Scorsese decides it's, he's ready to stop editing. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, yeah, but. <laughs> this was great about it. I yeah, mean, It's like yeah. when you can reach a level to have that level of talent and be able to be recognized so you get the resources because people respect your talent and your vision. That's a truly amazing thing. That's true, but then there's new pressure. Because, yes, of course. Of because course, then course, now, if for whatever reason, some critic who's never made a, a film before right, decides right. to trash it, Right. And and tell you how it's all wrong then. Right, right. So. Yeah, true. But that's another video. <laughs>